All right, so in this video, what I'm gonna do is show you how to graph a radian in standard form. But before we do that, we need to understand what exactly is a radian. So to understand a radian, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scratch an X, sketch an X and Y axis, all right? I'm gonna draw a nice little circle. Now, the way, the way that I have best understood exactly what a radian is, is to think about the components of a circle that we are most familiar with. For instance, the radius. We know the distance from the radius is gonna be, or the radius is gonna be the distance from any point, from the center to any point on the circle. So you can see here is the radius. Now, if I go ahead and take this radius, and let's pretend you know, I can be able to move it all around, and I wrap it around the circle, this rotation measurement is what we call one radian. So this measurement, rotation, from this ray to this ray is what we call one radian. And that is what would be in standard form, that would be called our positive direction. Now, if I was to take this radius and let's say maybe wrap it around again, then this would be two radians. And then if I did that a third time, you could see I'd get really, really close. And again, my radians are a little off here. But you can see this would be three radians, all right? Now, that's our understanding of radians. And you can see we're really, really close. And I always tell my students, it's like, oh man, it'd be so cool if we were like exactly three radians around halfway around a circle. And it just doesn't work out that way. However, you might notice that I'm kind of getting to something that you might be familiar with or you might know exactly what's going on. And yes, this number of radians or the number of radiuses it takes to wrap halfway around a circle is our most famous radian, I would probably measurement of all, I would say, would be the radian pi. So it takes pi radiuses, or pi radians, to wrap around halfway, right, halfway around a circle. Now, this is very important for us to understand here, because if we're going to graph our radians in standard form, we need to understand our pi, right? And we understand that pi is halfway around the circle. So let's get into graphing our angles here. So first one is going to be pi divided by 6. Now, it might be easier to understand this as 1 sixth times pi. Right? So pi over 6 is our kind of common standard form. But just remember, you can rewrite that as 1 6th of pi. So let's go ahead and draw back our circle. Now what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to draw the circle here. All right, so we have our x and y axis again. All right, now, if we know halfway around a circle is pi, correct? Well, we're trying to only, we're trying to only do a measurement of 1 6th of pi. Well, that means we need to break it up into six equal parts. So if I break this up into six equal parts, now again, we're going from standard form, right? So standard form is always going to start from this positive x-axis. So if I'm going to rotate, and again, it's not perfect. I apologize. I'm trying to do my best. Um, but if, I'm, if you can see here, there's six parts. And the six parts, again, obviously six parts of six makes pi, right? You could say six out of six parts makes is one pi. But we're only going to travel one of those. So this angle would be right here. So that rotation for one sixth of pi would be from here to here, OK? And that is pi over 6. Now let's go and look at negative 4 pi over 3. So when you're looking at negative, the, in standard form, a positive rotation is going to be counterclockwise, whereas a negative rotation will be clockwise. So what we're going to do in this case is we're actually going, going to go in the opposite direction. Now, in this case, you can see my denominator is 3, not 6. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to want to break away halfway around a circle, because I know that again, half of my circle here is still pi, right? But now it's going to be in terms of thirds. So I could rewrite this as 3 pi over 3. And wouldn't you agree that 3 pi over 3 is equal to 6 pi over 6, right? Now again, the negative is just going to tell me the direction, right? The measurement is still the same. But now I'm going to go negative 4 pi over 3 clockwise. But before I do that, I need to break this up into three equal parts. Now again, don't be confused with the y-axis, but hopefully you see that I broke half this circle, which is pi, into three equal parts. And then all I simply need to do is do one more extra part. So if I hear, here's pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. So the angle 4 pi over 3, again, which you could also rewrite this as negative 4 pi over 3 if you wanted to. But the way I like to do it is just kind of think about, so actually let me write my angle here. So this is negative 4 pi over 3. What I like to do is just think about you know, the denominators how, is how you're going to cut your pi or half of your circle. That's how you're going to break it apart. And the number of numerator is going to be how many of them you're going to transcend. So this would be pi over 6. 
All right, now let's go and get into 8 pi over 7. Now, I really like 8 pi over 7 because I'm always not very detailed or, you know, I don't, at, like, when I'm telling my students that they need to sketch their angles, I want them to be close. I want it to be in the right quadrant, and it should be closer to one axis than the other. But we're not, I'm not looking for perfection. So 8 pi over 7 is interesting because how do we break something up into seven parts? Like typically in the fours and six and thirds, like that's not too bad. But to break it up into seven parts is pretty difficult. However, there's one thing I really want you to understand about this. If I wanted to break this up into eight parts, okay, um, actually let me put, yeah. Actually let me write this over here. And this would be a negative four pi over three. There we go. Um, I just want to make sure I have enough room. So if I'm going to go to eight parts over seven, I'm actually not going to do eight parts out of seven. However, I do know halfway around a circle is going to be seven pi over seven, right? Halfway around a circle is pi. So I could break this up into seven parts, but it'd be pretty messy. It really would. So again, if I'm thinking, if I go to seven pi over seven, I only have one more part of seven, right? Now, obviously, if you think about this, you can just visualize here's six even equal parts. Seven equal parts is probably just going to be, you know, a nice little extra sliver right there. So if I was going to sketch this angle, again, it's positive, so I'm going to go in my counterclockwise direction. Seven pi over eight is going to look something like this. So this would be my seven pi over eight. All right? And then last but not least is we have a number. Well, it's like, what do we do with radians? Typically, when I introduce radians, it's like, okay, I get it. I understand it. I like it. Um, not too bad. And then we throw in the pi and the like fractions and they're like, ah, oh, dang it. Now it gets all confusing. But then I go back to numbers and they're like, whoa, 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 what happened here? And the thing is, remember, the number just represents the number of radiuses wrapped around the circle, right? So we said, you know, one radian was like roughly around there. So if I'm going to do negative one, well, then that's just going to wrap around here. So you're just going to go in that negative direction. And again, it's like a radius wrapped around the circle. So from here to here would just be the number 1. So again, to not confuse your radians with degrees when you have a number, you would see that we would have a degree symbol, right? We'd have a little circle up there top to represent it. It is a degree. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph your radians in standard form. I hope this was helpful for you, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.